Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to this week's episode of Freshly Grounded. Uh, this episode is with Shaib, uh, who you guys have seen on Freshly Grounded in the past. And we just had a nice little natter about uh, uh, just a few concepts. Like we spoke a bit about podcasting, we spoke about Islamic TV channels, uh, and then some documentary ideas and stuff. And before you knew it, time was up because it's Jumu'ah today. Uh, and so we had to uh, round up a bit quicker than usual. Um, just a few notes before we get into the episode. So... There's uh, so we've been getting a few questions about our live events. We just finished the Birmingham show last week, it was phenomenal. We had such a great time. Uh, some people have been asking when we can see when we can, we're going to release the footage. So we've decided that moving forward with the big live events, so not the house show, the big live events, we're not going to release the entire show uh, on YouTube, uh, and that's because we feel that when we release it on YouTube, it doesn't do justice to the kind of atmosphere and the environment and the the like fun of the show. It just takes so much of it away and we don't want to put like a subpar product out there. Uh, and so we will be releasing uh, some of the keynotes and stuff once the whole tour is done. So it's like closer to Ramadan. So you will be able to see aspects of it and we'll be releasing kind of clips on Instagram. Uh, but if you're able to come to the live events, uh, so we still got one in Manchester and one in London. If you're able to come, uh, then do come because I, I, you really, it's just an amazing experience. We have so much fun with the audience, so much interaction. Uh, just ask anybody who came to the Birmingham event. Uh, it, we had some really great feedback from it. Uh, so you can still grab your tickets by going to freshlygrounded.com forward slash tour for Manchester and London. Also, uh, we are raising money for Syrian homes uh, on our Instagram page. So go on our Instagram page and you can donate to that there. We initially started, I think, to try and raise money for, um, I think it was 150 families. And we hit that target so fast that we doubled it. Or we're doing 150 families now. I have to remind myself of uh, the numbers. Uh, but uh, alhamdulillah, our original target, uh, we smashed, you guys smashed so quickly. So we've doubled it. Um, also... If you're interested in buying the Freshly Grounded game, a pack of 100 conversation cards that will transform the way you conversate, uh, go to freshlygrounded.com, no, shop.freshlygrounded.com, where you can also grab some other merch, our newest t-shirt, oh, which I'm wearing right now. What's your favorite struggle, which is from the card game, one of the questions of the card game, you can grab that at shop.freshlygrounded.com as well. They're very popular at the event. And um, I feel like there's another announcement, but I just can't remember it. So we'll leave it there. Uh, with that being said, guys, enjoy this week's episode of Freshly Grounded, episode 267, is it? 267. Enjoy. And welcome to a Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I welcome. I said welcome to freshly grounded. After that bit. Created by. After that bit. Best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Let me shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> I just realised I've got the same glasses. Do you mean, bro? <laughs> exactly the same. I need. Uh, what do you call it? Glasses direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, man. <laughs> So I've got a uh, I've got a funny story about these guys. No, they look really good on you, Lombardic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've got a funny story about them because basically what happened is uh, I went to Specsavers and I got my prescription. I said to the woman, I said, technically speaking, can I just uh, grab the prescription from you guys and then get my yeah. own glasses? She was like, yeah. yeah, of course. So I took my prescription off of them, and my uncle is yeah, not. Did you actually admit to them you're going to get glasses from elsewhere? Yeah. Well, she recognised me, and so I had a bit of a. Uh, uh, oh, I shouldn't expose because I don't want them to get in trouble. Uh, but so anyway, uh, so I, I, I got everything I needed and I, I mentioned why. So I did actually buy glasses from Specsavers that day. Yeah. Really nice pair. I just kept my normal pair. And then I got a free pair of prescription sunglasses, which was so nice, bro. Yeah. Like they're the best sunglasses I had and they were just Specsavers brand. And then what happened is um, I... Uh, I, I uh, what I did is I went onto Glasses Direct because I've never done this. I thought I'd try it. Yeah. So I bought this pair of glasses, and these were so cheap they're like twenty five pounds. Yeah. And so I thought, let me buy the let me buy a backup pair. So I bought a backup pair, and I just kind of kept them to the side. And the Specsavers pair, which was like one hundred and fifty pound, within about two weeks, my son broke them. Yep. 
He managed, to, and I, I, I always put everything so high, and he managed to get access to it. And I was like, no, like I actually tried to look after them this time, and then the sunglasses. This is what I'm really annoyed about, bro. Nah. I can't find them. No way. And it's so nice, bro. Like it's so frustrating. So anyway, um, then what happened is. Closer to Black Friday, glasses direct. So then I started wearing these ones, yeah. right? And these ones, I paid 25 quid for them. I didn't even get the protective shield on them yeah, or anything. Yeah. So they're like a really weak pair, yeah. right? And then, but, uh, so then what had happened is, I, closer to Black Friday, they had like 50% off. Yeah. And so I managed to get like, I got like four pairs of glasses, Ray-Bans that were, were like 200 pound, I got 50%, no, 75% off. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, it was really, really cheap. Ridiculous. So I got two pairs of Ray-Bans, uh, and a two sun prescription sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. I've got four glasses, right? And I was like, that's gonna be my proper pair because now I have my prescription on there. Yeah. I'd recommend anyone to put their prescription on there. I'm never going back to an optician. No, 100%. I had the uh, same exact experience. So I got, I went to Specsavers, got a pair from there, a cheap pair, but you know, it was from Specsavers. Same thing happened, my son broke them. No. Uh, and, and I went back and I got the same pair again about three times oh, and the gosh. same thing kept on happening. And I was like, these these are just not good glasses, you know. They how can they break so easily? So I I tried glasses direct, and I had a, there was a sale on as well. Yeah. So I managed to get from like Hot UK deals or something. I managed to get like a coupon thingy, and uh, and ordered yeah this one and one, one other pair like a more of a square kind of pair. Yeah. And they, they've survived this whole time. Bro, I had them. So so you know with those Ray Bans, I have lost one of the pairs already. I can't find it anywhere. Yeah. And the other pair is like a bit. It's like. It's not the greatest. Plus, I think they're a bit big for my face. I wore them on the event. Uh, but they're okay. I still wear them. Yeah. Uh, and then the sunglasses I got from Glasses Direct are nice, but they're nowhere near as nice as the Specsavers mm. ones. So, which the ones that you lost. Yeah. yeah. And so out of all of the glasses I have, <laughs> and now I have to, like uh, a pair of ray bands sitting at home, and these are my favorite. Yeah. They're, they're really thin. They're nice. And they're stylish. And they were £25. And they're solid as well. Like when you hold yeah, them, they, they, they yeah, don't they feel good. like they're gonna break. No, right? they're good pair of glasses, yeah, yeah. bro. They've 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 lasted longer than my new Ray Bans in terms of like the frame already being bent. I think I have like a, a weird shaped head, <laughs> and so like my glasses always bend a bit. Oh, it's been a palaver, man. The worst thing is when the the the, the screw bits at the end get loose. Yeah, and then you have to get them tight, and you yeah. don't have you don't have the tools because they're so tiny. You have to go in to like yeah. specs or something and get them done. Yeah, it's the worst. Oh, Luckily, I have two uncles who are opticians. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, one's an opt optician, and another one's just, uh, uh, a DO, dispensing optician. It's oh, like okay. um, the person who like manages the glasses and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so if, throughout my life, it's been a bit easier to do things like that. Like I get, like, I can get my glasses serviced very yeah, easily and stuff. But, um, oh, it's been a palaver. Would you ever get um, laser eye surgery? I don't know. I was thinking about it actually. One of my friends went over to Turkey, I think, to get it done. Okay. And it's like much cheaper there than okay. to do over here. And he said it was amazing, you know, and uh, he doesn't need to wear glasses at all. And it was all done perfectly fine. Um, since he told me, I have been thinking about it. And I'll try to calculate the cost. And I think long term, it does save you okay. money rather than having to maybe buy more glasses over the years or to use contact lenses. Definitely cheaper than contact lenses. Contact lenses are expensive. I did try to do contact lenses when I first had to start wearing glasses and um, it just became too expensive. And it's so so annoying to like keep putting it in your eyes and, and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, laser eye surgery, I am thinking about it, but I'm comfortable with my glasses at the moment. Yeah, uh, Omar got um, laser eye surgery about a month or two ago. Okay. Oh, he loves it. Yeah. He never has to wear glasses again. Um, but his prescription was quite strong. Okay. Uh, mine's not. Yeah, you, you seem like you just take them off whenever you want and you're okay. I can. I do need them to drive. Okay. Uh, but I can read like that Dan Juma yeah. text. I can read that. Yeah. So I'm not. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, they have been getting progressively kind of worse over the years, but definitely I can manage without them, yeah, uh, yeah. Like for, especially short distance. So I don't think I would get laser eye surgery. I don't like contact lenses. Yeah. I hate them. Have you, you tried them? I've never tried them. you never tried no. them. So how do you know you hate them? Uh, I don't hate the idea of them. <laughs> like the idea of Putting touching my eye eyes. and pinching yeah. my eye. No, like our friend Onali, you know Onali, obviously. Yeah. He just like, <laughs> like he'll be driving or something. Like I shouldn't say that. He'll be in the passenger seat, <laughs> and then he'll like pinch his like eye out, throw them out, and put his glasses. I'm like, how do you just do it that quickly? Like, yeah, I can't do that. I tried it again just a couple of months ago because uh, I started to play football more, and I thought, you know, I need to not wear my glasses when I'm playing, or else they're gonna get crushed. I tried it, I couldn't do it, so I just I still wear my glasses when I play football. I just yeah. hope that, that they don't fall off my face. Yeah, <laughs> I wear glasses when I play football as well. Yeah. Okay, That's why you actually. have backup pairs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you have to have the backup pairs. So the one I don't use this one for football because I I like these pairs. The other ones, the square one that I got, yeah. I wear those ones. Yeah. <laughs> What's your prescription? 
uh, something like two point seven five. Oh, okay, or something strong. Like yeah, you should get yeah, laser eye strong. surgery then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you should get it. Yeah, it's been getting worse and worse over the years. I had to start wearing glasses first when I was like seventeen. Okay, I just started noticing that things started looking blurry, and I yeah. thought, let me go get it checked out. This is yeah, you need it. You got like astigmatism in your left eye. Okay, um, and then so I need it for like basically everything. Yeah, uh, so I always wear them. They suit you though. Not yeah, poetic. alhamdulillah. Some people actually, I, I was gonna say some people don't suit glasses, but every one I've seen wear glasses, they do. You you end up finding a style that suits you, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went yeah. through a phase of loads of different styles until I, yeah. I kind of settled on round glasses and some square glasses work for me. Well, it's it, like any fashion, it changes over time, yeah. I guess. True, 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 true. You find that when somebody wears glasses and you know them to wear glasses, when they take the glasses off, they look weird. <laughs> yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. They look like um. They look like they're uh, like they have like v like really small eyes. Or yeah, something. yeah, 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 yeah. And they look they look tired. like they're kind of, yeah, they're tired. They're yeah. just out of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, isn't it? How's the tour been going? You've now done one. Yeah. So it's been hectic, bro, yeah. man. It's been hectic. Like I was kind of telling you off, uh, but um, you know, last night I don't often go through a feeling of like feeling overwhelmed, like really overwhelmed. But last night. I was at the office working till late. And as I was leaving, I, I genuinely started feeling the physical implications of feeling overwhelmed, like the shortness mm. of breath. And I almost felt like I was coming onto a panic attack. Yeah. And I got home and I just didn't want to talk. And I just, I felt, I felt really horrible. And to be honest, I haven't woken up any better today. Yeah. I, I'm not in a, the bestest of places <laughs> mentally. Yeah. I just, I, 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 I feel maxed out. I feel really maxed out, bro, if I'm being completely honest with you. And I don't often feel like that. I can, like, as I'm speaking to you, my eyes are twitching. And, like, I'm feeling physical effects of this, like, of the stress and everything. And, like, I, I almost want to just, like, take a week off everything. Yeah. And then not do anything. But then I know that if I don't do anything, the wheels of Fresh Grounded will not move. Yeah. Not because... Uh, but we're a very small team. So we do obviously get help. I'm not, not everything's on me. But, yeah, we do the, the live tour... Uh, which you know sometimes when we do an event after the event you can relax but because mm. it's a, a three city tour we're like looking at what went right looking at what went wrong trying to fix it and also like we're only a few short weeks away from the next event so and then that's two events in the same week yeah. so we're basically playing two events for the in like for that are happening in three weeks time so there's that then there's the podcast course that i've taken on which is a seven week course <laughs> yeah. which some weeks i'm doing two lectures like this week i'm doing two lectures in one week and it's why live. did you decide to do it right in the middle of the tour um was that strategic? No, not necessarily. Well, there's, there was a few reasons. Um, I think like the timing felt right mm. in terms of doing podcast calls because you could see like there's been a surge for a while of interest yeah. and then eventually it's going to get to a point where like uh, perhaps it won't be as valuable. Yeah. Uh, secondly, now feels like the right time because I've been... Because th this month, literally... Oh my gosh, like two days ago, it was five years of Freshly Grounded. Oh, subhanAllah, yeah. congratulations. It was like literally like two days ago. <laughs> five years, years, you know? Yeah. Wow, subhanAllah, that went quick. So that feels right because um, I never like to feel like an imposter, like I'm teaching something I don't know. But now mm. that we're five years in, it feels like everything I'm talking about, uh, I have like knowledge on and we've like gone through Fa we failed a lot as well and so if someone was asking me a question i'd feel confident in not have given an answer yeah. uh, and then thirdly of course financial we've got this tour going on and we need the finances course, as yeah. a company and uh taxes eat us up <laughs> uh, and so there's all of the, those things and so it, it made sense on that level as well but so you've got the tour you've got the weekly course then you've got the weekly podcast which we've got to make happen and then there's all these other departments of yeah. Fresh like made halal and current events which i'm still the anchor of and mm. still like the director of and so i'm still very much involved in that then you've got the business side of things and then ramadan is coming up which is the most busiest period of yeah. time for any islamic organization and so with all of that bro i just i'm like behind my emails right now i'm like always feel like i'm playing catch up I'm, i've got a headache i just like completely Leave out, but and I just, yeah, I'm. I, I just feel like I don't know. I don't. Know, I need like, uh, what we're gonna do for the first time ever. I haven't actually announced this yet, but what our plan is is for the first time ever, straight after Ramadan, uh, take a break, okay, and actually not release anything. 
Interesting. Yeah. Because your model is always being released something every week. Yeah. We're actually going to do that. And I'm nervous by it because, like you said, we've only a handful of time missed something, yeah. missed a week. But uh, I think that the, the audience uh, completely will understand. Yeah. And I think we just need to take a few weeks out, r- review everything, renew everything. And just take a break and take a breather because it's gonna have been between now and Ramadan. Like, it literally, you've got two more events, and then we've got a massive Ramadan campaign we do every year with Spot. Yeah, during Ramadan, it's busy anyway. So, uh, yeah, just that's probably the best time to take out. And especially yeah. given that it's been five years, you usually have like a five year plan for your organization for yeah, your business. So, it's, it's, it's like a time to review okay, have we done what we wanted to do in those five years, and what's the next five years gonna look like? That's what are the next point. five years going to look like? I feel oh, like I'm hosting you today. I know. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad it was you. Do you know, I put out that tweet last night saying, yeah. does anyone want to jump on a Fresh Gun episode? And then when you replied, I thought, you know what? Um, that sounds like a nice time because, mm. you know, when you know someone, that you, you know, you're friends with someone, you can have a bit more of a relaxed conversation. And with how I'm feeling right now, <laughs> I'm not ready to interview you someone. You don't, you don't, you don't I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not ready to interview someone, man. And, and host someone. Like, I was going late today. I was messaging you like, bro, am I late? So, um, I don't know. For the next five years, we do, I think, like, the, the next five years, hopefully, are like expansion. So, um, Freshly grinding being more than just a podcast, but more than just like a content house as well. Definitely, I want to go into the realms of like um, having freshly grounded, uh, freshly grounded owning other businesses. Okay. Uh, so like acquiring uh, other businesses that we find interesting in our space, uh, not to like uh, monopolize, not to monopolize, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or not to go with like the Amazon model of like stealing business yeah. ideas, but to go well, that's amazing, and we know how hard it was to build in this space, uh, and you're doing an amazing job. So um, essentially, like uh, acquiring the business, yeah. which will help that business financially hugely. Mm. In not that we have loads of finances to give, as in it will, like an upfront acquiring like cost, and then also putting the person who's behind that um, project on a on a on a salary because. Mm. We know what it's like where you're probably, if you're building something up in the Muslim organization from like you're on a startup level, you're probably not paying yourself yeah, yeah. for at least a good few years. And so to instantly be able to get salary and to get like a reward for the hard work you put in yeah. and then some security because we've got a team around us. I think that will be the, the aim over the next five years. We've seen some cool projects that we want to get our like hands in that, that yeah. work with a freshly kind of message. That's amazing. That, that, and, and you're thinking that's beyond just the podcast slash media Definitely. realm is uh, even like going into other areas that Fresh Grounded doesn't necessarily have at the moment. Yeah, so I think the key thing with Fresh Grounded is our audience and our community, not our um, platform. Okay. The platform of podcasting could die any minute yeah. and uh, that shouldn't mean that, but then our audience that we built up would still need uh, or still want uh, a Fresh Grounded's take on things, I hope. Uh, which I hope is also very niche and specific mm. and it ticks a box that is hard to tick sometimes uh, with like the things that we try and avoid and the things that we try and go towards. And so I think that is that is that uh, that has a place in a lot of like industries and fields and places and platforms. So okay. that's the hope. Let's talk about you now, Shaib. Uh So how is Islam Channel Podcast going? You're now the host of that. Yeah. Uh, how is that going? I've seen some like great stuff from it. Yeah. What does it feel like? Uh, it looks like the guys have put, you know, uh, like a, a good amount of like backing behind it. Like yeah. you got a nice set and stuff like that on the So how's that going? What's that been like? Alhamdulillah, it's been going really well. Um, I kind of walked into a meeting with uh, my my you could like the CEO of Islam Channel basically and uh, it wasn't like like a planned one he was like I'm going to be in the office are oh, you going to be in the office alright let's have a chat and I thought it was just going to be a normal chat and then I walked in and I sat down he's like so can you host a podcast for me and I was like yeah yeah sure why not um, and I think he just kind of obviously knew that I had some presenting experience and uh, have I've been on different uh, podcast platforms before my own ones uh, other people's ones so he kind of wanted me to to do that and drive it forward um and so within a month basically literally we made all the plans for it and got it done um there is a a, a podcast room that we are making actually in the studio uh, it's just not ready yet so at the moment we're using kind of the main studio that we have where all the kind of tv stuff that goes on gets streamed from there um 
and uh, the point was, like, let's just start. You know, there's no reason to not not like delay and wait for everything to be perfect. Um, you know, even me, I'm not like the perfect host, but let's just get it get it going. And then as things progress, we'll see. Do we want to bring in new hosts? Do we want to uh, use the podcast room, stay in the studio? Do we want Do we want to kind of make specific strands within the podcast itself, or do we want to keep it as a generic Islam channel podcast? kind of people who come onto Islam channel or things that Islam channel talks about, we'll just talk about that. So at the moment, it's very much kind of a testing phase. Uh, I think we've only released three episodes so far. We've got a few more lined up uh, up until Ramadan. Uh, but so far, it's going well, I think, alhamdulillah. It's quite different for our audience though. So if you look on our YouTube channel, you would find that majority of the Is Islam channel videos are very short and mostly are sort of centered towards uh, news that's going on in the world that affects the Muslim community or something which is like a, a happy moment within the Ummah somewhere and where we're kind of exposing that and, and showing people and getting them to see it and feel inspired by it. It's usually very short videos. So doing something long form on our um, YouTube, channel. On our YouTube right. channel is very different for our audience. And so the, the episodes haven't reach the capacity that we want it to in terms of reach, views, etc. Uh, but that's because we know that our audience are not geared towards long form. And so the point of doing it now is to try and uh, give our audience that long form and bring in sort of a new audience and try to kind of take them on that journey where get, getting them ready for more longer form content, basically. So the podcast won't be the end of it. There'll be a lot more longer form things that we're going to try and do, inshallah, uh, from this. But yeah, alhamdulillah, I mean, I'm enjoying it. And it's, uh, it's something that I feel quite passionate about in terms of before coming to Islam channel, where I was working, the main thing that I enjoyed about it was educating people. Um, there was loads of other things that I did in, in my work, but educating people was like the main thing that I enjoyed a lot. And so I thought to myself, where could I go where the main thing really is me educating people, me being able to talk to people, me being able to take concepts, break them down and feed that to people so they, they can understand it. Um, and this maybe comes from my passion of I wanted to be a teacher, like back in like high school and stuff. I always saw myself like, I'm going to be a high school teacher. I think maybe because I had really good teachers around me, it kind of built that passion in me. But obviously seeing the salaries that teachers get and having my own family, it kind of didn't match up. So I thought, what is a way in which I can carry out that passion? And Alhamdulillah Islam channel, I felt like was a good platform to do things like that because when I'm working behind the scenes, I'm helping the team produce content that is going to educate people. Uh, if I'm in front of the camera, I'm I'm talking and I'm breaking things down so that people understand it. So all of that kind of helps and fills in kind of with my passion, I'd say. Yeah, I think it's very clever of uh, Islam Channel to have you host their podcast because it's the right way to go. Uh, like you said, you have experience with podcasts, but you're also the demo age demographic, I think, of a perfect host right now because mm. you're older and mature enough to be able to handle yourself, but you're young enough uh, to kind of still have your, your, your ear to the ground. Yeah. Uh, and people recognize you. Uh, in the sense that you've done some presenting and hosting before. So I think that that is the perfect partnership. So uh, it makes a lot of sense. And it's good that they've been able to, I don't know if that was their intention, but it's good that they've been able to see that. Yeah. Uh, because there's a lot of, um, sometimes like we can get things wrong, like with um, who to use for certain things. And it seems like that's a good decision. Uh, where do you think, you know, generally Islamic TV channels, yeah. Where do you think that they can uh, improve their content, specifically TV content, mm. in order to kind of be aligned with what the consumer is used to? Yeah. Do you mean like how things are changing now in terms of online content? Ooh. No, not in terms of online content. Uh, so not in terms of the platform, but in terms of the actual content itself. Yeah. Where, how can Islamic TV channels create better content that engage viewers? That's an interesting question. I think uh, for a long time with the Islamic TV channels, it's always been about sort of the same sort of things. Um, it's always been about, okay, let's have like, and you need some of these staple shows, yeah. You need staple shows like uh, when you call into the sheikh and yeah, you yeah, answer yeah. your question, question and maybe you call in to get your, your tajweed corrected. Um, or maybe there's like a, a chat show where we're talking about Muslims doing certain things. I think there are there are certain staples. Uh, but I think beyond those staples, there hasn't been a lot of thinking because 
um, you'd find that a lot of the shows are kind of, let's teach a particular book, Islamic book, and we'll just make it visually look nice and, and, and we'll put it out and people will gravitate towards it and and, and listen to it and want to watch it. And I, and I think there is an audience for that, definitely. And those things should be created as like things that for generations to come, taking those books and putting them into video form, I think is important. But I think there needs to be like maybe uh, more creative solutions towards uh, looking at what mainstream TV channels do, N not necessarily replicating that, but looking at what sort of emotions do they create in people when they're watching TV. Like when you're sitting down, you might be watching a mainstream channel and that mainstream channel has a weekly show what type of emotion is being created there for you to feel like you want to keep coming back to that weekly show? And I think a lot of the TV, Islamic TV channels maybe feel like n not looking at mainstream TV because it's sort of in, uh, it's not in alignment with our values. And so they don't want to take lessons from there. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of lessons to take from there, not in terms of the content specifically, but just in, in terms of psychology and how those things are created, the set design, uh, the way certain conversations are happening, the way that they're putting things across. And I think if we begin to adopt that, then we're gonna be able to, we're gonna be able to change our programming such that people actually wanna go and say, I'm gonna sit down at this time, I'm gonna watch this particular TV show. Do, do you think that's possible though? Do you think people, um, the audience that we want yeah so if i'm speaking as a like uh, if i am I put myself in the shoes of a ceo of a islamic yeah. channel the audience that i would want are they ever going to watch islamic channels or should i just think how uh, like Mufti, what mufti munir said which is that mm. um sometimes you just have to accept that there's some things that uh we're limited to right because we're Muslims yeah. and so there's only so much we could try and draw in an audience that wouldn't sit and watch Islam. I think just for somebody to sit and watch an Islamic TV channel it takes a lot yeah. because you're passionate about Islam yeah. but do you go home and put on an Islamic TV channel not always do you know what I mean yeah. I think that the sooner that we accept that I, I, by the way, I do think that Islamic TV channels are doing a great job. Islam yeah. channel, Iman channel. Uh, obviously, uh, you know that how affiliated I am yeah. with Iman channel. I, I do think, though, that there's one type of content that I would love to see from these channels that I think is very safe. Okay. Uh, but it's also very entertaining. And people watch these things all the time. And that's like really well created documentaries. Mm-hmm. The documentaries are always so important. There's always something like I remember when we first started Fresh and Grounded. It was huge. Uh, the, that one called um, uh, the one about uh, Juice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot the name of it, but e I know e what the one you're e talking clean about. Juice, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, juice, yeah. juice. Uh, and you and they like show you like how you can ju juice the fruits and yeah. Make, yeah, yeah. And then after that, there's a really popular one, obviously um, about uh, becoming vegan. Yes, uh, and then there's that conspiracy. Conspiracy. Then there's that minimalism. C, minimalism. minimalism. Mm. There's that C one. Yeah, I remember yeah. when I was a child, there was a McDonald's one where a guy ate McDonald's yeah, for like yeah. sixty days straight. <laughs> it's, it's always been interesting, and is and documentary content is something that can be easily created in a halal manner. Yeah, uh, but these documentaries are directed and they show like the Michael Jordan one. You know, yeah. like that kind of style of documentary. I think that we could create lots of in the Muslim world, and there's definitely a space for a documentary maker. Mm. To come along in this Muslim space and absolutely just Smash create it. amazing yeah. content mm. and uh, actually content that people would really want to watch. Yeah, I think there's the, that you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, We've been watching yeah. documentary content for ages in Fashion yeah. since Fashion Guy started, but I just haven't managed to be able to do it because it takes a lot. It takes a lot. I mean, there's there's one thing being a TV channel, and then there's another thing being like a media house where you are producing original content, mm. right? Um, you know, for example, BBC is like a media house where they have their TV shows that are being streamed on TV. You can go and you can watch it, news, this, that, whatever. But they also have a strand where they're creating kids shows, they're creating adult shows, they're creating crime dramas, they're creating this, that, whatnot. It's a whole nother department. Mm. And, I've, and that, I think, takes 
a lot. It takes yeah, a it lot of financing. Right. It takes a lot of uh, people to, to 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 come in and yeah, and, and multi multi kind of millions. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think I think you're right. There needs to be a shift towards that. There there is a conversation happening uh, within Islam Channel to look at documentaries, but I don't think it's anywhere near ready to get on the level of creating them and putting them out because that's that's literally you're creating yeah. original content you know and I had an idea a big thing. I had an idea for a documentary that I think would be amazing <laughs> and the idea was I had decided years ago that um, a documentary where uh, you go to like uh, these places on Eid right yeah South Broadway Edgeware Road uh, I don't know East London very well, but I'm assuming like Green Street, something like that. Yeah, where you know where like you, you know you get uh, everyone comes out and celebrates Eid, and sometimes it's like the opposite of what Ramadan has been. <laughs> and actually delving into that and, right. and 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 interviewing people on the streets and saying like why like what like in both parties like giving people who are like literally like jumping off of cars and like blasting music and saying yeah. like. Uh, uh, they're passionate about Islam because mm. they're celebrating Eid. Yeah. So they are passionate. They're celebrating. They're happy that it's Eid, right? And they're celebrating the end of Ramadan, which obviously we should do. Uh, but obviously, the manner in which it's being done is quite un well. It's yeah. un-Islamic. Yeah. And then, so but but asking like, what's the thinking behind? It? Like like and then and then and then interviewing uh, people uh, who are there but unhappy about that yeah and understanding their mindset mm. and um and basically with the end goal of that documentary to educate people in understanding that though your intentions may be good you don't want to ruin your 30 days of ramadan by ending the actions yeah like by going oh ramadan's over like uh, time to commit zina, time to drink alcohol, time to, or even on a lesser level, like, yeah. like go down the streets with like blasting music, music which yeah. is obviously shaitan would love. But, but, but formatting that documentary in a way that's not telling offy, but it's like just opening people's eyes to it. Like, oh, I never, con I never saw it from that angle. Yeah. I never considered that. But yeah, you're right. Like, I just thought I was fasted for 30 days. Yeah, actions are how they end. Um, uh, so actually judging how they end uh, Yeah like I just refrain from music for 30 days Why am I playing it now Like all of these things Like just opening Just like leaving the content there For people to think about But really diving into Like looking at things from an Islamic perspective Looking at things from all perspectives But not in a boring way mm. I think that would be a cool documentary I think that would be wicked I think you guys are the right people Because that's a that. big problem isn't it Yeah Like it after around, like the, the day of Eid It's, it, it, it's such a big audience there's just so many people yeah, that do everyone that. like you because yeah. you and, and like you do want to celebrate and stuff but there's yeah and and you have to remember that that's probably the common thing for most muslims to do yeah and you want to create that documentary in a way where it's not going to make people feel because one of the yeah, issues yeah, yeah. Is, yeah one of the issues is with islamic content is that okay i'm about to watch this and i feel like i'm about to get told off i yes. don't want to watch something where i'm going to get told off do you, know, do you know what, subhanAllah, I just literally, when I was waiting for you in the car, I was speaking to um, Sheikh Abed, okay. and he was uh, telling me, uh, we were just discussing about the concept of shame. And I think he, he said that he's going to do a khutbah on it, basically. Okay. And he was saying that we have become like a community of shame, like yeah. literally the way that we uh, communicate all of our ideas of Islam is through shaming one another, even though we don't directly say it, we we you know like for example when Sheikh is very passionate about the youth isn't he and he about is, yeah. like about ideologies he of is. like how to like construct society <laughs> and stuff right exactly and he said that's literally like the fact that we have become the way that we express ideas through shame is the reason why youth do not want to speak to those who are within religious circles yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and so it's, it's, it's exactly this like even within our documentary making we would go with the ang with the angle and the language of shame as well you know and that's something yeah. that we need to definitely move away from but i think documentary uh, unfortunately is, every time i've seen an islamic documentary it's always been on as in mainstream in the mainstream yeah it for the most part ones that i've seen have been on the side of um making Muslims look bad. Yeah. Like I remember my wife was watching one about, um, 
there's, there's been a few. There's that. What what do uh, British Muslims really think? That was a quite a famous one. Oh really? One. Yeah. I, I remember that title, but I can't remember what the narrative was. It was but like there's, there, 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 Islam is so beautiful and so pure that there's. Um, yeah, like yeah, some of these. Documents, I, I, I remember, bro. Like it was something like it was just trying to display Islam as like you know um, a girl who's Muslim. She can't you know be married to a Sikh or something. Like yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. really like it was just it was just so out of um, touch. Yeah, yeah. And it's it like they just created like make Islam just look so bad it's yeah. like the narrative and we need to create great documentaries but actually with the with the intention of bringing people closer to islam yeah. and, and opening people's eyes up yeah i had i had an idea of sort of following um the journey of uh somebody who's just started learning quran whether that be a child or whether that be like a new muslim and basically just following them on their journey and interviewing mm. them at certain points and 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 when and when you kind of see some of these things, you, you, there are there are kind of documentaries out there that follow somebody's journey for their whole life, yeah, whole life. Like every and five then, years or something, yeah. yeah and yeah, you yeah. you kind of feel attached to that person, right? Yeah. You want to go back, you want to see how idea. are they doing, and or did they fail? And there's obviously around that a certain drama, you know, where it's like not not intended drama, but as in life happens, right? Where that person stops their Quran journey because they lost a job, or you know, maybe they got married and it's a great occasion, but now they're like, oh, you know, my iman doesn't feel like it's all the way up there because I'm distracted by my marriage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I was I was thinking of this idea of having something like that. That's I think good I think it'd be well. I think it'd be amazing because it would kind of not only encourage people to go on to their own Quran journey, but also kind of just normalizes that idea around being connected with the Quran, you know, like, um, because sometimes to somebody who doesn't come from a totally practicing community or family, uh, when they're told the importance of the Quran, it sounds amazing, but it's kind of it feels like it's reserved for people who, uh, you know, look like this and act like this. But if you can show that, you know, there's a child here and they're going through this, that, school, this, that, this, that, and they're still doing it. And there's a new Muslim who has no exposure to Arabic and he's going through his own life or she's going through her own life and they've got difficulties here and there and upsides here and there, but they still continue with Quran. It sort of normalizes the idea that Quran is not, um, and I, I saw this tweet by a brother, that the Quran and your, your memorization of Quran is not a race, it's not a marathon, but it's an individual journey to Allah. Mm. And I felt like that was like, in, in, it sort of captured it amazingly because a lot of the times when you hear some of these quotes it's like it's not a race it's a marathon this is not even a marathon it's literally your own individual journey in terms of your connection with Allah SWT. so I'm hoping something like that would help people see that side of their Quran journey you know what else bro actually that's prompted in my mind is that right now the 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 there's a huge trend that and people enjoy uh, watching documentaries where like people are being exposed mm. right like this recent one called the tinder swindler and stuff like that like yeah. you're like oh my gosh that's it, it like crazy stories and stuff like that imagine if we created documentaries where we based on the fact that people love watching stuff that are being like of things being exposed <laughs> bear with me because you're thinking where are you going <laughs> imagine if we create documentaries where we exposed um Phase or charge? No, we expose like uh, like concepts, right? Yeah. Like l that that align with Islam, like drinking, mm. alcohol, right? Like because uh, they, they, you know, I get what you're saying. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. because okay, like you, it's all good. It, it's all good writing on a packet of cigarettes, um, smoking kills, yes. yeah. but uh, but you're selling it. Yeah. So it kills, yes, but <laughs> there has to be a reason why you're still selling because it makes money. Yeah. So you can't care that much. You care, a you care a certain amount. Yeah. Or like, I was thinking about it when I drive. I think to myself, you know, when I see billboards on yeah. the on the motorway, uh, sorry, on like the A roads or, or anywhere, I, I see billboards right when I'm driving. I've always thought to myself, those billboards are placed perfectly for when a person is driving, so that they can be these things can be advertised to them, mm. right? But I'm driving. Yeah. So. 
surely it's a distraction. Even if it's a small distraction, there's a distraction. Mm -hmm. And then the people creating those graphics behind those billboards are creating them so that they can grab the most attention, Yeah. right? Because if you grab attention, that's why they're colorful, like, you know, really sharp words, because if you can grab attention, then you get me to look. And if I'm looking, then I'm interested. And then I can later on when I'm home, Google that thing, Yeah. right? But we also know that um, you, I'm not saying this is wrong, right? Because if I was like in control of a country, I probably would have billboards. But I'm just saying, right? Like from an outside perspective, um, we know that uh, that when you're driving, if you're distracted, you can it can be fatal. Yeah. And I'm sure the government cares about that, but they only care. They have to surely only care a certain amount because they are willing to have billboards. Yeah. Right. Like if you were to say, like, we only care about safety of drivers," then there would be a rule that there's no billboards allowed. Mm. If we only care about the health of the people, then no cigarettes would be allowed. So it's. Oh, there's a, there's a level, right? Like where, okay, but we do want to make money off of billboards. Okay, we do want to make money off of cigarettes and stuff like that. And so imagine if, for example, I know loads of documentaries do exist on gambling and drinking yeah. and smoking and stuff. But but like, bec but as Muslims, we know that we have the haq. Yeah. And so we know that, okay, um, drinking alcohol is haram, right? It's not, it's not permissible. So imagine if we create a documentary completely uh, um, like completely almost maybe even completely uh, gen uh secular yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but it just exposed the harms of drinking yeah yeah and then there's some kind of hint towards look islam already predicted this yeah, or yeah. like this is but say uh, and then you could do that about gambling you could do that about smoking you could do it about um uh, okay like a big thing right yeah, like um sex before marriage yeah that's a concept that is widely accepted mm -hmm. Like you would be a stranger for a sh for even yeah. insinuating that you should wait until you're married, mm, right? Unfortunately. But imagine if we create a documentary that like talked about all of the harms of mm. like the societal harms and stuff of that. Like, and because we know we have the hook, we know that that like, and without having a correct intention, like that could be a documentary that changes people's perceptions, 100%. and then through that, people go, oh well, all of these things that are actually harmful to society. Islam actually stops these things at the root. I have a theory as to why Muslims don't do those kind of things though. Because we know we have the truth and we know that there are issues in society that Islam can tackle head on. But when we think about, when we say the word community, what comes to your mind first when you say the word community? Like what, what type of people come to your mind? Asian people. Okay. Yeah. Why? But that's because that's my community, yeah. I guess. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Like growing up, like we'd go to the Friday prayers at the Pakistani mosque. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so when I think of community, the word community it instantly makes me feel think of like the Asian community at yeah. that Friday prayer. For because that's that's what's been that's what you've been surrounded by, right? Growing up, yeah. Yeah, but it's because of that bias that we then don't think of community as those who are literally living in our locality. Yeah, and those who are literally living in our locality. Majority of them are not Muslim. Majority of them are going through these issues that Islam has ready to tackle. And when we, when Muslims are thinking about what can I do to benefit community, we're not always thinking about these issues that actually exist in our locality. And we're only thinking about maybe trying to help somebody on the Quran journey, help somebody um, get closer to Allah basically through maybe some of the uh, ritualistic means within Islam, which are very good to do. Yeah, I'm not I'm not playing that down. But what I'm saying is that we don't ever think about that our own locality that we live amongst are going through things like sex before marriage, are going through things like alcohol, alcoholism, are going through things like certain mental health difficulties. And all of these things could be addressed if only Muslims exposed them to these people and gave them certain solutions behind it. It's true. It, 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 even if you just think about the, the idea of giving, right? Like we've... Uh, inshallah as muslims experienced the truth in that giving actually makes you happy yeah. you know i saw a clip from tim humble recently that said um you you don't truly love someone until you give from what you love mm. giving from what you love I thought, wow now imagine a documentary on giving mm. because you know so, uh, uh, studies have been done on giving there's one study that was done uh, where they gave half of the people in the study uh, they gave all of the people in the study like five pounds or something and half of them had to spend it on themselves and half of them had to give it away 
And the, 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 the ones that gave it away felt more fulfilled and happy than the ones who spent it on themselves and bought something mm. for themselves. Wow. Now imagine you do a documentary on giving again, like, and then you, it's like, that's from Islam or, yeah. or a documentary on like, you know, like, um, uh, uh, you know, what I love about Islam. One of the things is this balance of humility and Izza. Mm. You're meant to be as humble as possible, but you're meant to maintain your honor. Yeah. Like so, because you know when you think that when it, the fact that Islam like you have to destroy the ego, sometimes you think yeah, but then sometimes you see people who are who have gone down that route so much in a good way, I guess, to the point though where um, I'll say Shaib, Jazakallah uh, Khair for coming down to do it. It must have been difficult. Yeah, and you'd go, no, but like who am I like? I, I, I wish I crawled here so that I could like really like do you know what I mean kind yeah, of thing yeah, yeah. right exaggerated sort of right though. not exaggerated but like you know you you you, you in you a good you way feel in that, a good way you feel low yeah. about yourself which you're yeah. meant to do right yeah but what's beautiful about Islam is that it mixes that lowliness mm. which you're meant to feel with Izza to say that not with ego but you are meant to have an you are meant to have honor yeah. and here's how you have honor mm. speak only when uh, you have something good to say mm. uh like you know uh, uh, have this kind of character. Yeah. Don't eat too much, uh, you know, uh, and stuff like that. Because it's true that when when you're when you don't eat too much and you exercise and stuff, you when you look good and you look like you're healthy, mm. um, you, you're a bit more respected because like, that guy looks like he's got discipline. Yeah, course, stuff like yeah. So Islam beautifully shows you how to have honor without having ego. Yeah, hundred percent. And still have humility. Mm. That's an impossible mix. It, it, like in it, it feels like an impossible mix, but it's yeah. not. It reminds me of a, a story of Imam Malik that when he would narrate hadith, he would wear the his best clothes and would look the best he possibly could wow. in order to honor the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you'd imagine that if you're meant to be really, really pious, then it wouldn't matter what you wear. Right. You know, If you're an Imam Malik type figure, you could go out in drags and drapes and you, your hair could be messy and whatnot because you know, you're so super pious. But actually he would come out with his hair combed and good clothes on and smelling beautiful because that was the right approach to have when it came to honoring the deen. You know what? The issue of Izza and honor, I think I would love to do a whole episode with, with like Sheikh Tim. Definitely. Like yeah. just talk about, like a per, to have a whole episode on how to have honor and still be humble and still crush the ego. Mm. And if you get that mix right, I think you're living life, you're happy because you never think big of yourself. Yeah. But you are, uh, and a, a big part of it must be also be that, you know, being just, if you're righteous, you have that because when you're righteous, obviously uh, Allah will make the people, you're like, yeah. you find the people you're loved kind of thing, mm. right? Naturally. Yeah, the, the issue is I really, really am big. I just, I just love that because it, everybody wants to feel respected, don't they? And when you come into Islam and you realize that you're not meant to big yourself up, you think, well, then how am I going to be? I don't want to people to think low of me. And it's like, oh, no, Islam has a solution to that. Yeah, yeah. No, 100%. It's like, I mean, if you if you looked at uh, a sheikh up on a member, you know, the... And he he looks he looks well put together, you know. His hair is combed. He's got he's got a nice stove on, a nice blazer on, and everything. Um, you know, you some some people would think like, why is the sheikh like trying to look like that? And and but but other people would think that actually, I am taking on his message much better, is resonating with me much better because it's coming from the mouth of somebody who looks presentable yeah. and is is honoring themselves uh, but they're humble it's not like they're going out and they 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 they're wearing that and they're looking like that in order to show off themselves they're doing that because they know that that's how you honor islam mm. is by being presentable when you're speaking about islam you don't go and speak about islam looking disheveled yeah and it, it shows discipline you know earlier in this podcast i mentioned that i was feeling like rough right like yeah. mentally and I, I i also figured last night that a big part of that is the fact that i feel like i've, I've lost discipline in all things mm. in the last few weeks like when i've had this displacement of things happening because we've got the tour and we've got this and we've got that i'm not being as disciplined in my eating i'm not being disciplined in my fitness yeah. i'm not being as disciplined in my quran and I, when you lose one discipline it's very easy to fall in the other disciplines yeah. and all of a sudden i feel like an un, i feel like a, an, an undisciplined human being <laughs> and that does not feel good yeah as much as discipline is difficult, the um, the long term gain of discipline is so beautiful. What do they call it? Uh, uh, 
when you gratification, instant gratification yeah, yeah. and delayed gratification. delayed gratification. Yeah. When you that instant gratification of not going to the gym, that instant gratification of eating whatever you want, that's what I've been getting recently. Mm. And now I'm feeling the effects of that because I've got delayed <laughs> the opposite of gratification. Yeah, yeah. I've got delayed like depression about <laughs> it. Yeah, so uh, it, it, discipline is oh, again just. That's a whole other topic oh, as well. Such an important thing. Yeah. yeah, you need that as well, subhanAllah. Um, Shareeb, I, I really appreciate you jumping on and having a conversation with me. No it's problem. actually been really nice and relaxed with all the madness know. going on. So um, it's lovely. Obviously, we've had to keep it short because of Jumu'ah today. And we're actually going to get this episode out today as well. But it's honestly been nice just talking about things that are nice to talk about and just like, you know, not think about like the emails that I have to go through and stuff. So. <laughs> You're going to have to go through them now. I know, I know. Go to your island, come back and try and tackle it all. But yeah, Jazakallah khair. Nah, no, Jazakallah khair for having me. Are you going to come down to our London it. event? Inshallah. Yeah, please Inshallah. do, bro. It'd be lovely. It'd be lovely. It'd be lovely. I'll give you some wristbands now so you can just walk straight through the door. Oh, Jazakallah khair. That'll yeah. be amazing. Yeah, we'll do that now. Uh, thank you guys for listening to this episode of Freshly Grounded. And we will see you, Inshallah, in uh, next week. Next week. All right, take care. Assalamu alaikum.